So one of the biggest news stories in 2022 is the fact that major pharmaceutical companies and big food companies have essentially corrupted our public health apparatuses and major institutions that influence health policy. In today's show, we're going to talk about a recently published study that enumerates just how bad this corruption is from a financial incentive level and its associations with the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. The paper that we're going to lean on uh, in today is titled the Corporate Capture of Nutrition Profession in the USA, the Case of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Now, this is a damning report, and it's not unique to nutrition. If you look at the New England Journal of Medicine, they've actually reported that about 86% of authors or co-authors have some sort of financial tie to major pharmaceutical companies when drug trials are reported. So this level of corruption is quite deep, and we need to be aware of it at the very least. And create some sort of system to prevent this level of corruption from influencing health policy that harms Americans. As you know, about 94% of Americans have some degree of insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic health abnormalities. We also know that about 94% of the COVID-19 deaths had at least four underlying health conditions that are mostly metabolically related. So if we care about hospital capacity and saving lives, we should care that major food companies are corrupting our public health apparatuses and associations that ultimately influence health policy. And we're going to talk about the details here. I think it's, it's really important to understand. And as this paper talks about, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics they certify over 100,000 dietitians throughout the United States, and many other health professionals are associated with this academy. About a third of their revenue comes from major big food companies and pharmaceutical companies, including but not limited to Pfizer, Nestle, Kraft, Kellogg's. Uh, the list goes on here. Um, Abbott Nutrition, which essentially has the monopoly on all of the children's uh, infant formula. Now, I don't need to tell you if you've ever purchased any of the commercial infant formula, the number one ingredient is actually corn syrup solids, followed by soy protein, followed by rice syrup solids, and often maltodextrin. So this is junk food for infants. And one company, Abbott Nutrition, has the market monopolized for infant formula. In fact, I've had many friends who have major nutrition companies who have sought to create a healthier infant formula but no manufacturer, and we've literally searched the entire US and globe to find a manufacturer who could, who is willing and able to make infant formula, but their FDA lawyers and people that are versed in regulatory say, you don't wanna to touch this because once you start making infant formula, the FDA will be at your facility every week. And it was a regulatory nightmare and hurdle that essentially they did not want to undertake. So uh, one company has the, the market you know, sort of monopolized here. And I think that is a concern because children should have, especially newborns, should have access to healthier quality foods compared to just corn syrup, solids, maltodextrin, and soy protein. I mean, I don't know what you think about that, but that's just my sort of controversial opinion. But even worse, many of the health associations the FDA, the CDC, and the NIH also receive industry funding. And also there's this revolving door, as this paper talks about, where you have people who have worked at, say, Monsanto or Bayer or Abbott or Pfizer, and they become board members or uh, policy leaders in these three-letter organizations, the NIH, the CDC, and the FDA. So this is something that we all need to be aware of, and this paper really does a good job of talking about it. So let's take a deeper dive into the strategies that these major food companies have used to influence the members of the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics that leads them to publish favorable industry research that, again, influences people to create the illusion in their mind that consumption of ultra-processed food that these commodity food companies make is actually healthy. Well, through a Freedom of Information Act, these documents show the, a connection between board members and General Mills, where they publish favorable research trying to influence more children to consume healthy whole grains. I don't need to tell you because many of you have derailed your health in the early 2000s by believing that whole grains are in fact healthy. Many people have gained weight. Many people have autoimmune disease as a result or acne, uh, fill in the blank, asthma, because of the, the foods that we ate as children, because there was a perception that whole grain foods are in fact healthy. Well, recently discovered emails as early as 2016 actually show that there was a, a campaign from uh, General Mills that was persuading members of this academy to publish favorable research. And there's a website, um, Kellogg's actually has a website marketing these ultra processed foods to buyers of school lunch programs, marketing breakfast foods and snacks and treats and so forth 
as heart healthy, as whole grain, as nutritionally supportive for developing children. And we know, of course, that ultra processed foods in children uh, is at an epidemic proportions. About 67% of the calories that kids eat now, according to a JAMA report that was published fall of 2021, found that children are eating more processed food than ever before. A recently published report, as you know, uh, has shown that adults eat about 57% of their calories come from ultra processed food. So this is quite staggering. Now, the important thing to remember is that the Academy generates about 30% of its revenue from donations from these food companies that I mentioned, these commodity food companies, Kellogg's, General Mills, Nestle, Abbott Nutrition, we talked about Pfizer, all of these companies that with all due respect to the products that they make, they are not serving the American public. So you can see now the conflict of interest, where you have this academy that largely influences health policy and uh, creation of nutrition guidelines in the food pyramid, they are receiving a substantial amount of revenue. In fact, the association reinvests in and has stock in General Mills, Pepsi, uh, Nestle, all of these food companies. So wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? If the association that is making guidelines is reinvesting in food companies that are making products that are unhealthy and is also creating favorable research that influences the end user, creating the illusion that these foods are healthy. But it's important to recognize before we go on, this is not relegated to the nutrition space. This is also quite prominent in the pharmaceutical space. But before we go on, friends, I want to thank you for being here. Thanks for that like button. If you're enjoying this content, please share this directly with a friend. I will put links to the articles that we talk about in the show notes below so that you have access to this information. It's very important that we know that where our information is coming from and what the conflicts of interest of these people are. Now, you know my conflicts of interest. We make health promoting t-shirts. We make dietary supplements. We make tools that actually improve your health. That's how we fund these videos and make excellent content and so forth. So if you wanna support our mission and also encourage health promoting conversations with the people in your community, check out myoscience.com. We have the Eat Like Your Life Depends On It t-shirt, the Lift Like Your Life Depends On It t-shirt, Make Natural Immunity Count Again and other amazing t-shirts that again, I've met so many friends in airports, on planes, at grocery stores, picking my kid up from school. This is a great way to connect with people who are like-minded in your community. You can use the code podcast to save at Myoscience. So let's talk a little bit about the pharmaceutical corruption within the medical research. Well, it's known, and this was reported by the New England Journal of Medicine, about 86% of scientific studies have authors or scientists that are direct employees of pharmaceutical companies on the papers. So either the editors or the, the authors themselves have some connection with pharma. Now, you might say, well, that's not that big of a deal. I do think it's a big deal because then you can get corruption. It's all about following the money. So we need to figure out a way to disentangle the financial incentives from corporations, particularly corporations that are making unhealthy products and the literature, the scientific literature, and also public health policy. And so this paper, and there was a, a great article in The Independent that talked a lot about this, and I think it's really important. Now, it's also important to remember that the USA is just one of two countries that allows direct-to-consumer pharmaceutical advertisements on television and in newspaper and so forth. And I don't need to remind you, but it, there appears to be a connection here with the media as well in terms of being complicit in promoting the consumption and the normalization of eating unhealthy foods. If you've ever recently watched a national sporting event, whether it's a football game or a basketball game or, or other network television, Every other commercial, it seems like, is promoting ultra-processed food, whether it's a new pizza, whether it's a new uh, cheeseburger or free french fries if you order this cheeseburger. And then what do you see after that oftentimes is an advertisement promoting a prescription drug. And so, my friends, I, I really think that we're facing a challenge here because research actually shows that about, I think it's the, the average Medicare-eligible individual is on at least five pharmaceutical medications. Now, you might say, well, their doctors are following the science. There has never been a study where people are taking five drugs at a time. My friends, these are studied in isolation. So what is the combined effect of taking all of these things and how is that impacting this complex system that is our body? I think it's time that we, we really do follow the science and start to focus on the root cause here, which is overconsumption of ultra-processed foods, underactivity, circadian rhythm disruptions, sleep issues, stress management issues, and the like. Now, this goes on into politicians as well. It was known in 2020 during the election, both Democrats and Republicans 
for running for House or Senate took respectively six, six point seven and seven million dollars from pharma. And so you have people that are creating policy that are being influenced by pharmaceutical companies that are directly taking money from pharmaceutical companies. So what do we do? We still have to vote. We still have to uh, participate in local elections and, and the sort, but we should have more disclosures and we should have the ability and, and, and knowledge of the fact that policymakers can also be corrupt. It's not just the associations. It's not just the medical research. It's that policymakers also take money from pharma and big food companies. Uh, in fact, it was known that the Biden administration actually paid major news networks $1 billion in the year 2020 and 2021 to promote the thingy that was widely recommended. So CBS, ABC, CNN, uh, CNBC, all the major networks received a combined $1 billion of advertising to promote the thing that a lot of people ended up taking and are now, you know, according to research, not taking as much. The boosters, only, I think, 16% of, of Americans have actually taken it. So, we need to have more transparency. That's the point of this video is to share this with you. And I feel like many of the people that understand this level of corruption also uh, look differently at our public health institutions. And I question why there's a coalition of activists that went after Joe Rogan in, in the fall of 2021. Where's the coalition of activists who are now going after the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics for all of their reinvestment in companies like General Mills and, um, and Nestle and, and Kraft Foods and Kellogg's and, and the like? Because really it's these, these companies that are making the commodity products that are unhealthy, but they're being, they're, they're being sort of relegated on, as a facade that they are healthy due to industry favorable research that is being published by an association that is corrupt by the very companies that are making these foods. And again, if we care about saving lives, if we care about hospital capacity, we should care about this because as I mentioned, in the hospitals, the research shows that a super majority, overwhelming majority of people that got severely harmed by COVID had underlying health conditions that can be directly linked to consuming the very foods that these associations reinvest in and receive money from. So that's, I think, a major red flag and something we should be talking about. So that coalition of activists, I think it's time that you go after these institutions that are receiving money from commodity companies that are making unhealthy foods. So that's the message of this video. I do want to thank um, this group of, of scientists and investigators that published this research because without great investigative work, we wouldn't even know about these conflicts of interest, which I think uh, are quite high. So as always, friends, I appreciate you tuning into this video. Thanks for checking out these articles that we talked about, and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.